Warning, the following message may be offensive to some audiences. These audiences may include, but are not limited to, professing Christians who never read their Bible, sissies, sodomites, men with man buns, those who approve of men with man buns, man bun enablers, white knights for men with man buns, homemakers who have finished Netflix but don't know how to meal plan, and people who refer to their pets as fur babies. Viewer discretion is advised. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. The message of Christianity is that salvation is found in Christ alone, and any who reject Christ, therefore, forfeit any hope of salvation, any hope of heaven. The issue is that humanity is in sin, and the wrath of Almighty God is hanging over our heads. They will hear His words, they will not act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment, when the fires of wrath come, they will be consumed, and they will perish. God wrapped himself in flesh, condescended, and became a man, died on the cross for sin, was resurrected on the third day, has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he sits now to make intercession for us. Jesus is saying there is a group of people who will hear his words, they will act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment come in that final day, their house will stand. Welcome to Bible Bashed, where we aim to equip the saints for the works of ministry by answering the questions you're not allowed to ask. Listen and enjoy this midweek installment of Answering a Fool, as Pastor Tim answers a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. In these shorter episodes, Pastor Tim answers objections from internet trolls in an effort to help them go home and rethink their lives. Troll hunting is hard work, but hey, someone's got to do it. Now, without further ado... Here's Pastor Tim. Whenever the Bible is um, brought up in conversation in general, there is a a type of atheist or agnostic individual who is going to essentially try to dismiss uh, whatever is being said with um, uh, some sort of appeal to religious uh, violence or religious genocide. Now, we had a comment on one of our posts that was unrelated to the subject at hand, but then uh, the comment read this way. Bible bashed. The literal belief in theism is a horrific history that keeps repeating itself. Uh, the apartheid turned genocide in Palestine is a good example. And then basically, uh, underneath that, there's a meme. You're completely entitled to opinions that are not supported by evidence, but the moment you spread that opinion as fact, you are a liar. If you spread it as a fact, knowing it's not supported by evidence, you are both a liar and a fraud. So, uh, this kind of move that's being made is a, is a move that's essentially uh, it's tempting to say that because uh, there has been violence associated with religions in general, uh, he talked about the apartheid turned genocide in Palestine, that's a good example, uh, that uh, all religions must be rejected. And so uh, he lumps all theist, theism, all theism, irrespective of the type of theism that it is, any belief in God, theism, any, any belief in God, is just a horrific history of violence that keeps uh, repeating itself and must be summarily dismissed. Now, um, this kind of objection really isn't a morally sub, uh, serious objection at all. It, I mean, it doesn't uh, pass just you know logic one on one. It's it's not a, it's not an intelligent uh, interaction with the Christian faith. It, it's uh, just a dismissal. That's a straw man that is essentially lumping all religions together and, and basically just saying that all that religion can produce is violence and. Uh, this is one of those curious uh, things uh, to claim because when you when you actually think about um, deaths in the world, uh, death, death, uh, violence, killing, genocide th- these are not problems that are somehow in in any way uniquely uh, connected with uh, Christianity. One of the things that um, you, you know your main atheist uh, Christopher Hitchens when he was alive, Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, they always like to uh, basically trot out this uh, tired uh, trope that, you know, Christianity just produces Genesis. But they don't seem to take uh, to account all the uh, genocide and death and slaughter that's come from uh, their materialistic evolutionary uh, atheist. And so you think about someone like Adolf Hitler. He killed and executed six million Jews in the Holocaust, three million Poles, three million Russian prisoners of war, uh, and, and as many as uh, eight million others in, in Europe. So you know, Hitler, Hitler is an atheist who, uh, who uh, uh, 
made uh, the, the Crusades uh, feel pretty tame uh, in comparison. Uh, think about Joseph Stalin. Stalin killed, um, you know, in, in the Soviet Union following the Russian Revolution between that and, and, and until his death at, at the end of World War II, between 10 to 20 million Soviet and German prisoners died. Uh, so uh, there are substantial death tolls. Just think about Pol Pot uh, in Cam- Cambodia, and he killed as many as 2 million Cambodians, uh, which is about 20% of the population. They died through execution, disease, and starvation. Uh, so th- th- there's example after example after example. Uh, just think about Mao. You know, he, can, he killed tens of millions of Chinese, most of them in uh, public executions. So you, you think about something like this, and you think, man, like uh, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of deaths that seem to come from these atheist dictators, and 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 so the, you know the atheists wouldn't want Christians and, and wouldn't allow Christians to say that uh, the product of atheism is genocide. But you know if you're going to make that argument, you're going to say, hey, what 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 uh, what is more consistent with an atheist worldview, or what's more is genocide more consistent with an atheist worldview or a Christian worldview? And you have to say it. It's obviously more consistent with the atheist worldview than it is a Christian worldview. Think about the scriptures that were given. Jesus tells us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us and despitefully use us. Uh, we're, we're told, you know, if your enemy hungers, to feed him. If he thirsts, to give him drink. For in so doing, you'll heap coals of fire upon his head. We're, we're told to love our enemies, to pray for our to, to pray for our enemies, to do good to those who persecute you and despitefully use you use us. If you look at you look at the actual fruit of Christianity. Uh, the fruit of Christianity in the world is largely good. Now, there's some negative fruit, and I don't think anyone would say that. Hey, the Crusades that was, um, those were good things. But uh, but one of the things to realize is that that um, bad has been done in the name of every single cause, and you don't throw out the good just because there's some bad there. Uh, but then you think about uh, something like atheism. Atheism logically. If you think about like the logical consequences of, of, of an atheistic worldview, the logical consequence of an atheist worldview is obviously genocide. I mean, it obviously is. I mean, so so with uh, Darwin's um, origin of the of the species, you think about the subtitle there as it relates to the favored races. I mean, the idea Darwin's idea was uh, that there were uh, different races of human beings, meaning uh, almost subhuman categories of individual human beings that uh, are, are that fall all along the different line of, of a spectrum between, you know, man and ape, essentially, you know. So when you think about something like that, when you think about a, a Darwinistic worldview, uh, one of the things that was intentionally, I mean, the idea of racism was intentionally developed in a Darwinian framework, which basically said that there was different uh, um Subhuman, you know, quasi species of, of human beings uh, that were higher and lower on the evolutionary scale. All the racism that you see that existed uh, as a result of the scientific racism came from a Darwinian worldview, quite uh, logically and naturally. So, you, you know, you had the uh, Europeans who were considered the highest on the evolutionary ladder, and then, you know, you had uh, the, the uh, Asians below that, and below that, the bottom rung was, you know, the Jews and the <laughs> And, and the blacks. And so uh, in that kind of framework, genocide is a natural product of that kind of belief. If you believe that, uh, that, um, that Jews and you believe that blacks are subhuman species, as scientific racism and Darwin taught us, then one of the things that you're going to come to is that the natural byproduct of that is going to be genocide because they're not afforded the same rights as the favored races in the language of Darwin, as far as that goes. And, and one of the things that you'll see is that in these atheist uh, regimes, you see genocide. That's the natural result of a philosophy that makes sense of it. Uh, and, I mean, that obviously makes sense in, in a worldview that's based on survival of the fittest. Now, uh, now I think, you know, if you were to be charitable to uh, your atheist objectors, uh, one of the things that you might realize is that, hey, yes, okay, well, atheism, you might grant the point. All right, so let's grant the point. Atheism has its uh, materialistic, materialistic, naturalistic atheism. It has its bad examples, whatever, but not every single atheist out there wants to go commit genocide, and so maybe it's possible to be an atheist and not to be pro-genocide. Sure. All right, yeah, I believe that, but if you expect me to make that kind of allowance for you, 
then you also are going to have to make that same sort of allowance for Christians. And you, you might also want to uh, make the kind of allowance to say that, hey, it seems to be that if you actually do read the Bible with any care uh, and, and quit en- engaging in the straw man, silly arguments that are easily refuted, one of the things that you'll realize is the Bible does teach a lot about loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. And, 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 and it is quite possible and it is quite possible that there are many people who abuse Christianity and come to some bad conclusion. So there's that. I mean, there, it, at the very least, you might want to say at least uh, the verdict is out on that sort of issue. Uh, but but this kind of objection is kind of silly when you think about it. When you actually look at history and you look at the uh, the the death toll that's out there, uh, Christians are, are by no means. Uh, uh, the major cause of genocide in history. Religions in general are not even the major cause of uh, genocide in history. And that's something that you have to think about. Not all religions are equal. Not all religions are teaching the same thing. And uh, there are some religions that are uh, more prone towards uh, ethnic or religious genocide than Christianity, and Christianity simply isn't one of them. This has been another installment of Answering a Fool with Bible Bashed. As always, if you would like to be included in one of our Answering a Fool episodes, feel free to respond to us on our Facebook, Twitter, or Gab posts with a disrespectful, sarcastic, often off-topic comment that shows you did not thoughtfully engage with anything we have actually said, and we will do our best to include an answer to your trolling comment. Keep in mind, the days are short, and trolls are in abundant supply, but we will do our best. We'll be right back.